Okay. Mm. Yeah, how about Yeah, I, I feel scared about how to set this up in a way that works. Mm. Mm. I think I'm I'm just gonna start. Uh, what about context? Mm. Okay, one possibility is that you talk to me about my actual white widow stuff, if anything occurs to you. And then it's a little more like real. Um, Cause then I may have my own reactivity or whatever come up and then we can address that. Okay. Or if you want to role play someone else, me, me role play someone else, I can do that too. Okay. And then for me, I'll just, yeah, I can, I want to kind of split the focus between the actual words and the conversation and also all the, the feelings that come up in the process. So like, I don't feel an inclination to like necessarily stick in the role play mode, like and, and finish the role play, but more like address kind of the layers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I think something that could work for that is that, that you can say beep at any time and then we'll kind of have a meta conversation okay. about why you're saying beep and then you can go back into it, come out of it, back into it. Yeah. Beep, beep and go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, beep, beep, shift, go. Okay. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, just noticing my fear. Fear. I think that's a great place to start. Mm. Yeah, I, I notice I have this fear about how, how I and how I see others <clears throat> use their sexual energy, often unconsciously. And mm, I, yeah, I wonder, like, does that land for you that I say that? Yeah, I kind of feel scared to hear you talk about it because I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of a a topic I don't usually talk with people much about. Yeah. Do I notice? You said you feel scared about how you notice that you and other people use their sexual energy sometimes unconsciously. And do I notice? myself about that. Um, do you want to give me an example of how it mm. comes for you? Yeah, like an example from, <clears throat> from my beep, life. Actually beep. I noticed that like in that moment, the reason I asked you about yours was like the vulnerability level in terms of like, there's some tally that goes on that if I hear something vulnerable from you, then I, then there's more inclination for me to go deep with it. Mm. Whereas if you're asking me first, then, then, um, then I don't know like what the where the bar is kind of. So Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go. Hmm, Alan, I've been I've been doing some experimenting after having got a distinction from possibility management called White Widow. Mm -hmm. And and this is a distinction it pretty much it's it's about how how there's a survival strategy that that it, that I used that I use unconsciously where I use my sexual energy in yeah in unconscious ways to sometimes like get what I want or mm, like draw attention toward me or, mm -hmm. or yeah, I mean, mostly get what I want and draw attention toward me, even though I didn't used to think of myself as a, a manipulative person. Mm -hmm. And, and I noticed that I, um, I'm, I'm so scared about this 
I'm, so, I'm scared that I use my sexual energy unconsciously. Mm. And so I'm, I'm choosing to do the experiment of talking about it with people. Mm. And cool. Yeah, I wonder if, yeah, are you up for a conversation, like further conversation? Or yeah. Already started one? Yeah, I feel kind of scared about it because it's like, I don't really know what I'm going to find about myself. And yeah, I'm willing to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel glad to have uh, like a story about you that you, even though it's, yeah, it could be a scary topic to talk about anything to do with sexuality because in modern culture, it's so taboo and it's so, you know, there's so much right, wrong, good, bad about it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like shaming and blaming and, yeah, for me, it's just like lack of familiarity talking about that area. It's like mm. more unknown in general. Yeah, yeah and I, yeah, I feel scared. I don't know how to continue. Well, what would you, what would you like to accomplish? Hmm. Mm, let's see, yeah. Like my purpose would be like a discovery conversation where, and, and again, I feel scared because it's like, yeah, what, what you said about unfamiliarity, about even talking about this topic in the first place, and then I feel scared to put you on the spot and then. Hmm. Yeah. And, Thanks. Yeah, and I also feel scared to like overshare about mm. my experiences and my the, the experimenting and discovery that I've already mm, kind of done and yeah, I even notice. I even notice, I, I, I actually just noticed myself like almost a, 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 a movement starting to happen where I'd, I'd, I'd somehow like use my like womanly wiles to, you know, pass the speaking stick to you mm. so that, so that, you know, that you would be like, oh, and now I have to like, kind of, mm. and yeah. Well, it strikes me in this moment that there's maybe a shit ton going on with this. Actually, when you talk about even just in the moment using womanly wiles of like movement, I'm like, holy frig, there's like, maybe this is a vast topic. That I re It's bigger than I realized it was. That's what comes to me. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that matches my own sense of it. But, you know, opening up this, this topic of, you know, it was kind of like, for me, it was mostly through the possibility management website, the White Widow website. Mm. And it was, I had the experience of like really diving into a huge, huge territory that I didn't know existed. Mm. And, or that I had an inkling existed because I'd already, you know, like done mm, discovery into like, yeah, womanly wild stuff. And, and you know, for me, that was like a course of study that I did for like, I, I was committed to for like something like five years where I was uh, learning and doing the coursework of a woman called Alison Armstrong. Mm. And it was about men and women and relating and of course sexuality came into that and um, she makes the distinction between our, our kind of cave man and cave woman selves like our instinctive primal selves mm -hmm. and realm of possibility about when things are being done consciously rather than just through primal reaction 
reaction. Mm. I got I got up to primal selves and then my internet stopped for a minute and then back into possibility of so what you just said, like the last sentence. Yeah, there was a bite out of it. Yeah, she talks about uh, caveman and cavewoman on the primal side mm -hmm. and then human spirit as, as the conscious the, where choice is happening. And all of her mm -hmm. work is about empowering choice instead of... Uh, instinctive reactivity but also understanding it she has a way of of talking about it that kind of is connected to like evolutionary necessity hmm. the, the two genders of humans which mm -hmm. is a whole other territory <laughs> but in regard to the using sexual energy unconsciously and then consciously Mm. Ed, do any questions about it come up for you mm. that we could riff off? Well, I kind of, I have a sense that I kind of like flirting and stuff when I'm doing it. So I don't know. Yeah, there's some part of me that has a sense of like I'm scared to be challenged or like that somebody you know if i learn this stuff then i would have to change how i am or something like that mm. um and also but i get the part about like distinguishing what needs to be distinguished so that i have choice that i'm choosing i do yeah i think that's significant i also feel scared about yeah where i where i maybe i'm not aware of what i'm up to again yeah. Yeah. When you say you feel scared, you might not be aware of what you're up to. Can you say more about that fear? Sure. It's just like, yeah, I think of a friend of mine who I had kind of a flirty energy with and then, and then maybe I don't stay in touch kind of thing. And I wonder if I've created some, some consequences by like being flirty in the first place and setting a false precedent or something. Hmm. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah. But in the moment, I wasn't really aware of. I wasn't considering where I was going with it in the moment. Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and something about what you said about your fear also yeah brought up this part about it where mm, it's not that using sexual energy unconsciously is wrong or bad and that using it consciously is good or right it's it's that it's that using it unconsciously and consciously leads to different consequences coming mm -hmm. about and like like what you said like mm, I mean, that you can say that you recognize that you were flirting with your with this friend that and then you wondered you know what it meant what it what it what the consequences of yeah. it were but even that you can even say oh that was flirting suggests to me there's like a a degree of conscious awareness happening mm. that's different from mm -hmm. kind of denying it or just simply like not being aware that mm -hmm. that was using sexual energy, that flirting is using sexual energy. Uh, yeah, okay. What comes up for me now actually is the distinction of like what I know I know and what I know I don't know and then like what I don't know, I don't know, which is actually invisible to me. And then, yeah. So if I'm aware, oh, I was flirting, I had a flirty energy with her and, you know, maybe there were consequences is, I guess really isn't, isn't an example of where I don't, don't know what I don't know. So yeah, no, uh, I feel a bit angry that I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed anything about me that you might want to tell me in the context of this? 
that I may not notice. Ooh. Yeah, I feel my fear going up. Feel scared mm -hmm. of yeah being honest and open and. Yeah, thank you for asking such a dangerous question. Hmm. My story about you is that I, I I can't remember a time where I was like, oh, there goes Alan using his white widow. Hmm. Mm. I can think of times when I thought I saw women using their white widow on you. And I wondered how that was for you. Hmm. And at the time I didn't ask because I was scared to bring the distinction into the space at, at a time that I would have like assumed or anticipated that gremlins would have come out about, <laughs> you know, I think there's a thing that happens when, when there's this possibility of, of you might have a white widow and you probably do where it's like, no, I mm -hmm. use my sexual energy responsibly and I know what I'm doing and it's not wrong. It's not bad. And so I, you know, I feel scared about bringing it up at all. Mm -hmm. And I also, I was going to say, I feel scared about like misidentifying or, or, or saying what's happening, like thinking that I know what's happening and speaking as if I know what's happening uh, when I might be mistaken. Hmm. Like you noticed times where it was maybe somebody was using their white widow on me and you didn't want to like say something that would trigger gremlin or you might be off and then that would turn into being corrected or some sort of battle maybe or something. Yeah. That's my words. Yeah. Yeah, it, it covers it. And like, even now having this conversation and recording it, I have this fear that maybe people who have been in company with both of us would hear me say this and then be like, she's shaming me for having sexual energy and using it. And it's mm. like, no, that's not what I intend to be doing. That's not my bright purpose about, about having this conversation and going into this discovery and opening it up and it's, and, mm. uh, and I have shadow principles. I have a shadow purpose, an unconscious purpose, an unconscious. And because I've done processes to help myself discover what those are, I, I can be more in that area of, of knowing what I don't know. Somehow it, it's not quite it, but something like that. Mm about that yeah there there's there would be shadow purpose active about you know my superiority purpose my shadow superiority of being like oh yeah i know about this stuff and they don't and mm -hmm. and that then of course that would have consequences in our our relational space mm -hmm. and this thanks is, for sharing yeah Thank you. Yeah, the superiority thing is definitely a default for my box as well. So thanks for pointing that theme out. There's more coming up for me around this, which I'd like to share. Are you complete on what you're on your current yeah. train of thought? Go. It's it's like kind of a shift of gears slightly and but it's from my personal experience in Portugal in the training spaces that we shared there with the team of 40 or 50 people. I remember so, like some people were talking about, there were a few women that were noticing the white widow theme for themselves and checking what that was all about. And maybe because I'm, I have an inclination to check myself as like, oh, I probably have that too. Like I'm kind of, training myself all the time maybe it's my not good enough but not okay box or whatever but i was like oh what about me what's mine and when i got kind of into the layers of it and watched there was this thing that happened for me which was like like kind of the real animal like layers down at the bottom of it was like well if i can't use my sex energy then what the fuck is the point of like any of this fucking nonsense of life so there was like some pretty significant 
like kind of um, rooting in there somewhere about that sex or playing with sex is like is something that at least my box really wants to do that when it's when it's a voice like that my sense is it's my box because my being is is not like all pissed off about things normally um but yeah my my box was like yeah what the fuck is the point of like being here if i can't play with sex basically and it was like quite strong so i think there what what comes what i'm getting from that is there's like even talking about the white widow thing for me triggered like a, a kind of like a, a win lose frame for myself around it. Yeah. it. Um, and then, yeah, some right and wrong was kind of like attached to that and noticing too, that like intellectually I can say things like, I know it's not wrong, but it just has consequences. I can say that from the intellectual body and it still seems like the right wrong is actually in my cells and in my other bodies, like in my structure. So yeah. I'm noticing that like, it's pretty deep, I think. And yeah, for me, I noticed that it, there was an attachment to, to that. So, so yeah, I can, I, maybe that's why it's, I guess what I'm sharing that for is that it seems like it could, can be a sensitive issue when, when talking to people around it, if they have that same theme of like, are you trying to take something from me, you know, by bringing this up or whatever, yeah. um, which is not necessarily what, what anyone's trying to do. But if I'm like in this place where I'm questioning what role this white widow thing has for me or the, or the sex energy has for me, then maybe I'll take it as threat from somebody else talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's so much, uh, that speaks so much to what I feel scared about when I, you know, kind of bring up the topic and Can I ask something? Go ahead. Um, I want to get where you're going too, but I want to distinguish is the white widow is only about unconscious, whereas if it's conscious, it's just a choice. Yeah, it, because it's a survival strategy. Okay, great. Mm, so, so like, yeah, just to break that down a little for myself really is to practice talking about it. Yeah. Is that my survival strategies are yeah, attitudes and behaviors that I unconsciously chose to survive. Mm -hmm. and, and then the possibility is that when I discover how I, how it goes for me about that, how I, like, what are my patterns of behavior and my attitudes, then, then it becomes a choice. Mm -hmm. And especially when I go through the emotional healing processes that complete the emotions that would have been part of the experiences that I had where I, I made these unconscious choices. And, and, and yeah, growing up in modern culture with, especially the media, mm -hmm. films and TV and advertising kind of constantly sending the message that being sexy and using sexual energy will will have these consequences you'll be you'll be impressive you'll be happy you'll be mm, you know at the front of the line for more mm, and mm -hmm. yeah you'll get you'll get all this energy and attention uh, flowed your way if, if you turn it on, turn on sexual energy. Mm -hmm. And even that is a lot of it is unconscious messaging. Like they're not yeah. saying, you know, buy our car so you can be sexy, so you can get attention, so you'll survive. It's not what they're saying. It's just being like, ooh la la. They just put chicks in cars or whatever on yeah. in imagery or yeah. Yeah. It's like implicit. Yeah. Yeah so much mm -hmm. happening and 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 even and this part you like this part about how it's not talked about very often adds to the the taboo kind of force field I think around it mm -hmm. so then when that is opened up it's a bit of a Pandora's box where it's like poof 
Yeah. It can be like an energetic sense of like getting something wrong and bad all over the place. Yeah, actually it kind of occurs for me right now, like there's fear afraid because afraid of like losing control in the conversation or like, yeah, getting in a place where I don't know how to handle the conversation. Hmm. It's like three, three out of 10 fear. Yeah, thank you. What would be the scariest place this conversation could go? <laughs> Let's see. Let's try this. For me, it might have to do with, I don't know if it like in regards of white widow though, um, but for me personally, the scariest place this could go would be about masturbating, porn, things like that, sex related, but I think, or like publicly telling yeah, publicly sharing my my secrets. They're not really secrets anymore, but like publicly talking about my sex life as if it were me talking about other things. Like, oh, I can talk about music, or I can talk about you know how I went to the supermarket, but it's I can't talk about masturbating or, or like that stuff with people openly in the world. So that would be the scary the scary area for me, I think. Yeah. Or if it could it could become scary if like I asked you, do you see anything? And it were an area where I really had a lot to see and you were pointing it out, then how things occur for me a lot is like, I get like my box freaks out kind of. Um, so that's scary too, but I didn't really seem to, didn't seem to bring up a lot for me when you said what you had to say to me earlier about that. How about for you, where would it be scary to go? Mm. Yeah, the scariest would probably be like interpersonal. Mm. Like, like, I mean, especially with a recording, mm -hmm. a video recording going on, like, like, how is this relevant between you and I? Mm. How is this relevant? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I didn't ask you to let me know where you've seen me active in my white widow. And, and here I am talking about how it, but I'm not asking you. Yeah, I think there's still my box and my gremlin are are, are really committed to maintaining a, a kind of act of mm, I'm not bad, I'm not manipulative, mm -hmm. e even by owning how how I have been in the past. It's like to be good. Is, is still part of the purpose of it. Mm. And I don't, uh, yeah. I, yeah, it's, it, it's just all, it's all pretty scary for me still. The whole topic? Yeah. Yeah, and then I got that you're scared about you notice you're not asking me the question and that you, maybe your box, your gremlin has a purpose of avoiding areas where you, it would occur that you're not okay or whatever. Is that what you're getting across? Mm. Yeah. Like this, in this territory, I'm keeping it in the kind of theoretical, theoretical mental making, you know, references to things that I've discovered about myself, not really, mm. really getting vulnerable or, or explicit about it, because I feel scared that I'll be made wrong. Like, I'll, I'll just be made wrong and bad for, mm, for one, one, having sexual energy and using it unconsciously and causing the consequences that it causes, which are already consequences. Like yeah. I feel scared about, I feel scared about being someone who, who, who then 
Mm. Like, yeah, pushes people's buttons, triggers them into having reactivity about, about their own kind of mm, how their box works around sexuality. Yeah. And then wanna, being the I one wanna, who gets blamed for it. Yeah, I want, I have an impulse to complete the first part of what you said, which is that you're afraid of being made wrong or bad. Yeah. And then the second part was about afraid of triggering react triggering reactivity for people. Yeah, which which would be another way to end up being made wrong and bad. Right. Mm -hmm. Seems like a doorway there. Yeah. That's one I have as well. The, the wrong or bad seems to come up for me as well. Yeah, being made. Yeah, and especially in this area of of sexuality and sexual energy and behaviors where that are fueled by sexual energy. Mm. Yeah, because you know some of the mo modern culture thoughtware is currently is about how you know we're supposed to be liberated mm -hmm. women are supposed to be especially liberated from being prudish or uh mm -hmm. you know having to be pure and good and into this possibility realm of being like uh exciting and and alive and not being ashamed and not being uh, you know like small in these in the, in the ways that are kind of over here in the realm of like sexual energy being shut down mm -hmm. compared to over here where sexual energy is like allowed and free and, and being used and and then this the white widow distinction brings in this whole like well question of like how much conscious awareness is happening and how how responsibly is this this mm, kind of natural resource of sexual energy being mm. applied natural well. resource yeah <laughs> it sounds like sounds so technical when i talk about it like that <laughs> And I, yeah, I feel scared to, yeah, come across as all in my head about it and theoretical and mm. dry. And, yeah. I was thinking one, one possibility well, that occurred for me is that, that I'll share somewhere I noticed that maybe my white widow was active, but then again, I don't know if it's, unconscious I'm, if I'm aware of it now, but there's something about <clears throat> when you were living out here, there were times where we would hang out in the kitchen and for example, making the cake, I think the, the, the second last time we made cake and I get into a space where I'm like hanging out and I don't, my mind goes kind of empty. And I think that's like, a possible, I don't know, like, to what degree, okay, so I'll just check in with myself, to what degree is it sexual, and to what degree is it about just connectivity? It's like three out of 10 sexual, and seven out of 10 about connectivity, that I kind of get, it's like, it's somewhat childish, the way it occurs for me too, is like, I'm kind of, my mind goes silent, and I'm just hanging out being there, and like, maybe it's enmeshment, or just, I'm just, kind of being comfortable and hanging out without anything to say or whatever. So I don't know. I don't, yeah, I'm noticing the time in the kitchen. The second last time we made cake. And then one more time where you were over by the pantry door and we had just chatted for a little bit and then I was kind of hanging. I, I even said it, I think. I'm kind of hanging out here. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm hanging out with you. And there's like, yeah. I don't think it was... It was like maybe two, yeah, two out of two or three out of ten 
like sexual possibility or something. That's how I would frame it. So I just noticed that. Let's turn my heater off. So yeah, that's me going somewhat into a little more like lived experience stuff. It doesn't feel, feels a little scary to talk about it, but not overwhelming. Yeah, thank you. Or the time you braided my hair, I think there's something about being touched that inclines me more towards sexual desire or connection. So I know I really enjoyed having you touch my hair. Um, white widow. I think I was pretty aware of myself and what was up for me and just navigating a choice that I was, I think my experience, but I miss things. So. Yeah. Thank you. I feel somewhat sad because it's, it didn't seem like much of a challenge to share that. Like my fear level never really went over above four, maybe. This is the sad is about sometimes I, I like to push and share some something that's a little more scary and I'm not finding it right now. Unless we go into this other terrain of masturbating and things like that. Mm. Yeah, my impulse is to kind of wrap it up there rather than going any <laughs> into new, more terrain just because of time. And sure. Mm, yeah, thank you for for having this conversation with me and giving me a chance to yeah practice talking about something that's scary for me to talk about. Do you want to share one or two takeaways that you have? Yeah. Yeah, I think my my main fear about talking about it was that I would would go into this theoretical kind of like I know about this and as a as a kind of way of mm, my box and my gremlin kind of protecting me from from being more vulnerable and mm. I feel glad to have noticed that I yeah I can talk about it in in like in whatever language comes to me to talk about it uh, and and yeah I think this is like a golden key for me when I'm when I when I am talking about almost anything from possibility management with people is to use less possibility management terms or to err on the side of that mm -hmm. in order for there to be more kind of vulnerability and authenticity or, or something even though the clarity of the distinctions brings a certain amount of crisp authenticity yeah, I, I'm noticing that in a way, this conversation as an experiment was also an experiment in in just yeah, speaking more authentically or more from a kind of bigger pool of possible words to use. I feel glad about that. Thank you. I take from this, well, I, I, I it meets a need, just to connect, meets a need for connection for me. So it's nourishing just on that level to be with you. And if I take anything about White Widow or the subject matter, I'm just reminded that, reminded of the, the fear is not logical necessarily about what comes up. It's like, it's maybe it can be deep if there. Yeah. Here's layers. At least that's how it occurred for me with it, like my experience in Portugal, etc. So just to get that, that is ha that may happen for others as well when talking about this stuff. Yeah. yeah thank you. Mm -hmm.
How about I turn off the recording and we have a little after party? Sure. That sounds good. <laughs>